On the side, I'm a content creator. What are you doing? Recording. What is that? Hola. Hola, hola. <laughs> Como esta? Tierra, planet, planeta, tierra. Hey. <laughs> you work remotely as well or what? What are you, tech as well? No, but I'm you're, tech. You're so I, and you came to this planet for making friends and you're recording everything. You are absolutely correct. How did you know? Because you are recording all the time, so I feel like you are... You already know. So my friend that's meeting up with us right now, and he's in tech. And my boyfriend just left because he was tired, but he's also in tech. So I kind of feel like, because he's like, you know, he's like more of an doesn't drink, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm more expert. So but you can just go home if you want, like, you seem tired. And I'm like, fuck, you would have got along with all of you guys so well. I shouldn't have told him to go home. Mm. <laughs> he actually literally went back home. Back to the States. Or here. Oh, okay, okay. I'm about to say, he dang, he really was tired. He, he wanted to go to sleep. He was here 10 minutes ago. Ah, uh, so that means I probably took too long then. Could have met him. Okay. So I was like, I'm just like mad at myself. Oh, well. Alright, we'll see how the night goes, right? We'll definitely see how the night goes. I think it's going to be pretty cool. For the most part. Practically Colombian, but he's Venezuelan. Venezuelan Colombian. But I have, so I have two jobs. So I have a business and a job. And my day job, I sell tech certification. Tech certification. Yeah. For a okay. Company, I, whatever. Can I can I can I buy can I buy a can I buy a Net Plus off of you, and like a Security Plus off of you? Probably. We have like literally we're the biggest uh, company. Okay. For tech certification. That's what's up. Relationship coaching. Basically, but my target market is women mm -hmm. who like are not dating but want to date. So I'm, okay. I'm a dating coach. Okay. I don't have like a communication course. I've studied that, but like I focus on women that are like struggling to date. So demographic is 18 and older, or like what is it? I mean, honestly, like, a lot of people that I work with are like 55 to 40. 55 to 40. 35 to 40. Oh, 35 to 40. But okay. I'm, I'm only 25, but a lot of people that work with me. Ah. You've been very successful with that. So, it's yeah. Been, I okay. started six months ago. Well, obviously not as successful as I wanted to be. I had to get a job. Uh, I just got the job two weeks ago. I okay. Started. But, um, but yeah, I should be. I probably only have to do it for like four months, and then I'll probably go full time in my business. So. That sounds I mean, awesome. I have a Facebook group and an Instagram following, and I build a community. And uh, I launched a program, two programs. So I've had 13 girls in my program so far. So just going places. I had that. That's what's up. I know it can be a little, I know being a dating coach can be a little challenging, especially like when those have like certain needs and demands that you have to accommodate to. Could be challenging, but I mean, 13 clients so far and it's gone? More power to you. I've more than that, just 13 in oh, my group. Oh, in your groups, gotcha. 100. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. How old are you? 25. Yo, she told me that she thought I was younger than her when she met. Uh, what? Like, oh, yeah, she's like, I feel like you're younger than me. That's what's up. So we need to get you your margarita. I need a margarita. So let's find you one. We got, we go down. Do you want to go to Messiah now? They have margaritas other places. I just drank a bomb lemonade de coco. I love that drink. My favorite drink on the planet. Me gusta mi lemon amarillo de coco. Es mi es mi favorita. Sí. Sí, claro. Allí hacen conmigo muy dulce. Me gusta. Mmm, me gusta. Sí. Solo Colombia y Cartagena. Primera vez en Primera vez en Cartagena, limonada de coco. Perfecto. 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 Mm. Es mi droga.
something? Yeah, Nate in your state. Hold on. Well, you got it. That's. You got it. I don't know. Reflexes be kicking in. I know we in Colombia. I feel like I gotta protect people. <laughs> okay. I actually never walked down this path. It's like I've been so afraid of uh, what should we call it? I've been so afraid of poblado that. This is me. Yeah, let's go. Nate's in your state. You were like, you seemed like you didn't want to go there right away. Okay. This is the best camera for this type of thing. So you see New York and everything and everyone's coming and they're not they're not they're staying there they want to stay they're putting deposits down they're living here nobody wants to typically typically they have uh they have uh a, like a different stage you know I'm gonna go to Peru I'm gonna go. but when they come here they typically stay I, I feel you on that I feel you on that because um I was telling everybody my city to me seems to be Cali at the moment right I start, I, I, it's, yeah, it feels the closest to home. As, as a New Yorker who's been living in the Bronx his whole life, it feels very similar to home in a, in, a, in a good way. It feels familiar. And I think the people that I met there feels very familiar and everything as well. So, like, I, I get here and I'm like, I don't know when I want to leave, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can go back to Cali or go back here, but I'm like, I enjoy my time here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, it's... Medellin is the city of 4 million people. Okay. But it's a small town mentality. It's it's like a barrio. They call it a small town mm -hmm. mentality. Right. That's grown over the last thirty years. Just about. From the eighties. From the eighties. Four, four plus million people. Jeez. And you've been living here eight years. Here, eight years. And your restaurant's been around here for two months. Two months. How's it going so far? I mean. We've been great. We've been busy. Dumb dumb wings is good. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> so so yeah. Oh, it's man. I had the bread made for me, mm -hmm. uh, my ingredients. I have international ingredients. I have American ingredients. Right. Um, from ketchup to the pizza, the sauce. Right, right, right. To the cheese, American cheese. Okay. Alone, Italian pepperoni. Okay. So it's great. Uh, we, it's been outstanding. The people, all the gringos, their expats are all writing about it. Right, 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 right. The, the ribeyes cut thin. Okay. Cook it right. Peppers, onions, mushrooms. Not peppers, whatever you want. Okay. It's good. That's what's up. And where are you from originally? Northeast Philadelphia. Northeast Philadelphia. Yeah. Raised, and I went to Penn State University. Yes, yeah, so I hear that. So what do you have to tell the people in Philadelphia about the cheesesteak too? Oh, it's better than Pat's and Gina's. That's why. That's why. Wouldn't even consider them. <laughs> That's what's up. Because yeah, we already know about Pat's and Gina. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. What was your name again? Carmen. Carmen, all right, man. Appreciate it, man. You already know, man. We here in, Med in the Medellin Poblado Carmen shop. You already know, man. You Take got the stuff. Front. And again, my wife and I will be the All right, cool. No doubt. I'm going to stop by whenever I can. <laughs> Billy, say. Working. Working. Uh, so, heck yeah. Heck yeah. You already know. You already know. Like some ultimate Jettas Park tour. Where the heck are we? These guys made how many turns? Well, a taxi stops here. I'm just going to see what the scene is like and then I'm going to get a taxi from here and we out. Oh, there's an exit over there. That's good. Okay. Halloween theme. We got a test on the way out. Hello, everybody. Just pack. Regular people. 
Regular people, regular party. I see. Park tour. The freak? I ain't never seen Parky Jettas like this. It's almost like it's Vegas or something. Like Las Vegas. I'm disappointed. That don't look like no real Philly cheesesteak. So necesita abre un restaurante allí. I think I need to open up a restaurant down here for sure. Jamaican. You already know. Colombians starting to like my food, so I'm doing a good job. Oh, there's a Spanish school? Right there. And a Spanish school. Medellin Spanish School. Well, hopefully this place is dope. It, it, it's a hostel, ain't it? Good stuff, see. Vlog. Okay, yeah, we going up into Malaysia. Okay. Pretty fancy so far. this piece. Okay. Oh, she's going in, ain't she? She got skills, doesn't she? Thank you. 
I think after the show. All right, let me tell you something, man. First and foremost, Gabe is a whole character, and he actually truly provides good enjoyment to my show and it's a pleasure to have him there and he's a cool person to hang out with i first met him in cartagena we were supposed to hang out afterwards and it never happened so we met up again in bogota hung out there and then he wanted to get drinks here in medellin around parky jettis in poblado and i said hey sure why not let's use this as an opportunity to get content and chill and hang out and relax and at this point i also had two other people that i was more or less overlooking chaperoning that they were doing their own thing and they were wanted to know where I was and asked to pull up as well. And I said, hey, let's go. One of them in my group circle is a guy that can be a little headstrong and when you tell him some things, he's the type of person that has to learn for himself. So I say this to say that there is a scam that they do in Colombia where some of the people will buddy buddy up with you, be friendly and all to get free drinks or whatever have you. And the one of the guys I was chaperoning ended up getting caught in that scam. And needless to say, he learned that lesson moving forward. So now Gabe is about to get himself in some trouble as he makes friends with a Venezuelan that's right next to him, as you can see. Now in this video, Daniela was a little uncomfortable with the guy and Gabe was already drinking enough of the substance here before he was at a point that he couldn't really make proper decisions for himself. <laughs> So Daniela actually wanted me to like, keep an eye on him. And I'm like, you got you. So when the other guys decided to pull up, they wanted to buy a flight of shots. I don't buy alcohol in the States because I think alcohol is super expensive. And I would never spend that much money on a drink unless someone provides it for me. But here in Colombia, it is affordable. And so here in Super Shots, the guys wanted to take advantage of the opportunity, get a lot of drinks on board and at this point Gabe was already drinking he was already hammered he was slowing down and he the Venezuelan that he became cool with he offered him a drink to the Venezuelan's defense he was like oh you sure is it okay so yeah get a drink get a drink so yeah get whatever you want and the guy got himself the 11 mil peso which is I would say roughly a three dollar shot but it was a shot but it was like 18 inches and he got himself a shot and he kept ordering those shots. Gabe didn't really put a cap or specify to clarify with these guys. Cause I'm like, look, you're going to get taken advantage. And I told Gabe, I said, Hey, look, Gabe, after this, you might want to have to close out your tab. And Gabe wasn't listening. I think after the flight of shots, he wasn't listening at all. He was just done. So it came to the point at the end of their drinking session, the bill came. And then Gabe was kind of upset because I think on the bills somewhere around 500 mil peso, it was a lot for what he anticipated to spend. And we know the reason why uh, I might want to add when I told Gabe, I said, look, Gabe, you want to, you know, you might want to have to <laughs> close out your tap. But I think him and his, uh, under his influence state, he was listening to nobody. You know, I'm like, all right, bro, I'm going to leave you be and let it happen. And mind you, the Venezuelan, as he was getting his drinks and shots, he was going to the bathroom. He came back sniffing, rubbing his nose, take it as it is. But he himself was already, he was lit as well. So he was lit. Gabe was lit. And Gabe knew what was going on. And Gabe started to get irate. And he got confrontational. All right. So I told the guys I was chaperoning. I said, look, you guys don't have to get involved. I told you guys to come out here and I'll watch over you guys. But by no means do you have to fight this battle. I told y'all to come out, so you guys are not responsible for this. Let me handle this. And Daniela was getting a little worried because now Gabe ain't listening. And Daniela, she's a tender-hearted young woman. And you're like, you kind of like, oh, man, you just got to help. <laughs> so I'm like, don't worry. I, I got Gabe's back. So now I hope this doesn't escalate. I'm saying myself, I hope this doesn't escalate because you know, the first punch is thrown. I'm going to have to get down. So as they're both getting in on it, because Gabe is cursing them out, Venezuelan's cursing them out. And from that on, the Venezuelan leaves, comes back, and starts cursing them out. I see another homie of the Venezuelan pop up. And then when he pops up, he's not saying anything. He's just looking kind of serious. I said, oh, here we go. We have another one. Granted, they're small. I said, I think we could take them. But then I see the three other dudes in the back, and I'm like, all right, all right. I'm telling Gabe, I said, look, we're going to have to squash this right now de-escalate the situation 
And Gabe was just getting in his face again. And the Venezuelan, he was ready to go. Gabe was ready to go. Venezuelan just seemed a little more local than how Gabe was acting. Because Gabe, they both under the influence. But the Venezuelan was under the influence of the alcohol and something else. Right? So they kind of like, they are, they're both lit. And something could pop off. And I'm like, all right, look, we're going to have to de-escalate the situation. Because when, when the bar, the bartenders, they know what's wrong. But th- that's the thing about Colombia. They expect you, the gringo, to pay for the bill. So they're not going to call foul on the people that's doing wrong. They're just going to look at you and expect you to pay. It is what it is in Colombia. You got to look out for yourself as a foreigner out there. Despite the drinks being inexpensive. So I'm like, no, nah, tranquilo, mi amigo, está bien. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm told the venezuelan yo my friend no it's so cool you know, you know he offered you a drink it's fine he didn't tell you to stop because i didn't know what he told you so don't worry about it so much he didn't tell you to stop it's on him let him handle it said oh yeah 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 said yeah yeah don't tranquilo man it's okay because he offered you and then he the venezuelan started to calm down and you, you know i de-escalated the situation i gave him a pound i gave his homies a pound and everything was cool at this point. He said to me, you really good, good person. Him, bud, I don't like it. I said, I said, it's cool, bro. Don't worry about it. You, good person. And he gave me a hug and then he left. So I say this to say, man, if you're offering a drink, just be careful. Be mindful. <laughs> Pay a tab and dip. And that's the story that I have to tell you guys. And now on top of that, the homies was asking me, like, look. They said, yo, Nate, was Gabe really about to throw down? And I was like, yes. Yes, he was. Gabe is that type of person that gives off that very strong macho aura. So me knowing that and me hanging out with him a few times, and as although he's like, you know, a cheerful individual, I can tell when the buddy was about to get serious. I'm like, yeah, the home dude was about to throw down. But yeah, yeah, we squashed the beef. Daniela was happy. Everybody went home. We didn't have to throw hands, and everybody was happy. You know what I'm saying? That was the moral of the story. So if you like this video, consider dropping a like because we're trying to get up there in the algorithm. Long overdue, in my honest opinion. I've been in this space for a while, and, and you know I really would appreciate if you can drop the like and then let me know in the comment section below on how would you handle the situation. Have any situation like this ever happened to you? All comments will be read. I respond to these comments and yo, let us know what you think. Once again, I'm Nate from Nate in Your State. Thank you so much for watching. Keep eating, keep exploring, and I'll get you guys in the next episode. All right, peace. Nate in Your State.